Not only is that zit still glowing, but I managed to get glitter on it. Forget camouflage, I'm bedazzling my zit. What is up guys, welcome back. Today, I am going for my new driver's license. I have an appointment at the DMV. I bought a new car recently. You can't register a car in the state of New Jersey without having a New Jersey driver's license. So I made my appointment and today I'm going in. I'm not feeling top of the morning this morning, you guys. My little one caught a stuffy nose at daycare. It has been going around there as all things do at daycare. Everyone's been COVID tested. Nobody has it. I'm getting tested anyway just to be safe, but basically I'm just like living on NyQuil DayQuil right now, and I feel like you can just see it all over my face. We have some distance to travel to get me looking photo ready today, and I get this question all the time. Yes, there's wedding photography makeup, like that is a thing. And it is an ordeal and I think that you should give yourself as much time as possible to either have that done or get it or do it yourself. But for the sake of just, you know, being a wedding guest or going and having your picture taken at the DMV or something like that, there is something to be said for just understanding the way flash photography works and getting photo ready quickly. So today I'm going to share with you guys my tips on what to do, what not to do, to end up looking like yourself when you get a photo taken of you. Not that this is the most important thing in the entire world, but it is my driver's license and I thought that it would be a fun opportunity to share this with you guys. So let's jump in. Okay, so first of all, this is not the time for bouncy dewy skin. I know you're never going to hear me say that in another video, but actually I should start by saying, you wanna look how you wanna look. You wanna look like you. And if that means putting blue highlighter on your cheekbones, then you just wanna make sure that it's visible to the camera. It's about exaggerating the things that you want to show in the photo that make you look like you. So I'm not here to tell you what you wanna look like. You know, I'm just gonna basically show you how I translate my normal makeup look into something that I feel like photographs and still looks like me. So the big difference for me is dewy bouncy skin reflects under light in a way that doesn't look like me so much. And so I will use something that has a satin finish and do a powder look when I am being photographed. I also will not use a mineral sunscreen because it will also reflect the light. That's what mineral sunscreen screens do. I don't want to use a white HD powder of any kind because any any place that it kind of builds up on your skin, if you kind of powder more in one place than another, boom, you're going to get reflection when the flash hits you. And also you want to skip the dry shampoo. If you have greasy hair, then just, you know, find a, an eyeshadow or your bronzer or something that's close to your hair color and use that. You want to skip like a white <laughs> dry shampoo or you can spray a brush with your dry shampoo and brush it through your hair so that you don't end up with any large patches of white that are going to reflect the light. So as far as foundations are concerned, I have a few recommendations. So I absolutely love the Koki Skin Perfect HD Foundation, $12.99 at Sally's, a fantastic formula. I also love the Bare Minerals Bare Pro. This is like wear it to your wedding, but it just photographs effortlessly under everything. It has very flexible coverage. And what I'm going to be using today is the Bite Change Maker Supercharged Micellar Foundation. Every time I see myself in a video wearing this, I'm always like, God, that looks incredible. And then I also have my skin prep on right now, a little bit of moisturizer from Paula's Choice and some of the Daily Dose from Supergoop, their you know, second newest uh, chemical sunscreen. And um, I did though just start trying their sheer screen. And guys, I posted this on my Instagram. It is a dupe for the comfy water from Purito. So Purito experienced a little, a little scandal recently where someone actually lab tested the SPF efficacy, the SP efficacy, you could say, of the comfy water and the Centella green level unscented and found that they did not have the SPF protection factor that they claimed on the bottle. And so they pulled them as they should. And, uh, and they are, you know, reformulating to try and meet those claims. But that was heartbreaking for a lot of us because we all relied very heavily on those because they were beautiful under makeup. They had no white cast. One of them, the Comfy Water is a mineral sunscreen and the Centella Green Level Unscented is a chemical sunscreen. And they are both really, really beautiful. But you know, what's the 
point if you're not getting the SPF on the bottle. So the new Super Goop is a mineral sunscreen and it really works and even smells like the comfy water, but it doesn't pill up under makeup the way that the comfy water I noticed sometimes will. I even wore it under this new typology tint. Guys, I'm gonna do a full like, my attempt at like a French girl makeup routine kind of thing using this, but spoiler alert, this is great. I like it a lot. <laughs> it's gonna keep blowing my nose, I hope that's okay. Mm, I have quite the zit quite the zit up here guys wow it like freaked out and blew up overnight <laughs> she's special okay for concealer i think i'm gonna use my beauty blender concealer because it has just epic coverage and a really really nice finish to it but i'm going to be judicious here in fact, that's the light peach. I kind of prefer the light buff shade. I mean, I don't want to go too, too brightening underneath my eyes, but something that I learned in art school, when you do your first drawing course, <laughs> they have you draw some three-dimensional objects and shade them as you see fit. And then they put them on the wall and they tell you to stand back like eight or 10 feet to simulate how something would look on a gallery wall for somebody who was looking at it. And what you find is that the details really disappear and that you need to exaggerate your shading a lot more than you would expect in order for it to convey the image from a distance. And that goes for being photographed as well. That's why a lot of times we think we look silly when we're wearing false eyelashes or something like that, you know, in person, but in photographs, it just looks like your real eyelashes because you're used to seeing yourself, you know, looking at the detail on your face and everything. But when you're shot from, you know, multiple, multiple feet away, things get lost. The contours of your face get lost. Everything kind of gets flattened out and um, flash really flattens things out. And so you, I'm not going to be wearing false eyelashes today. <laughs> I, I just don't like wearing false eyelashes. And I honestly don't, think I own any anymore. We will kind of be playing to that mindset of contour and playing with like warm and cool and light and shadow more so than texture. You kind of want to keep your skin all a similar texture so that it all reacts to the light in the same way. There we go. Isn't that nice? I'm going to use the bite powder too. Now, if you have hourglass stuff on hand that you like, it photographs really, really well. It does. I'm not going to be using hourglass today because there just isn't something for everybody in that line. And I don't think it's fair. There is a huge <laughs> shade range to the bite beauty foundation as well as their powder. And I just like this because it has a shade to it. So again, you don't want to use something that has is white, you know, and trust it to be translucent because that's going to reflect the, the flash. You want to use something that when you are putting it on your skin, it's still the same color as your skin. I just, I love this powder. I made a pretty good little groove in there. And it's not often that I really like a pressed powder, but this one kicks up enough that it doesn't do that gummy thing that leaves the film on the top of the powder. I think I say that every time I use it, but I just appreciate that so much. And even though we are talking about a satin natural, you know, not dewy situation, it still gives me this luminosity. I don't know what it is about that foundation. And something that Rob Beauty Christie talked about in her review of it was so funny. She's like, it looks crazy right when you put it on. I thought I hated it. And then like five minutes later, you watch it kind of melt onto your skin and you're like, wait a second, this is incredible. The Bite Change Maker Foundation is like that. I do like it when I first put it on, but I like it even more like in an hour. Oh my goodness. <sighs> I'm just gonna have a red nose in my photo. That's just how it's gonna be. So there exists this Hourglass Nude Bronze Light, and I'm going to try and mimic that a little bit with just kind of a bronzer shade. So the options that I have here before me are the Arrive Bronzer in Light Medium. I can't find my Vesca Santorini. That would probably be the one that I would go for. I have Kissed by Rio, but it's um a little bit green for me. It's not the one. Uh, and then I also have the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow. Hmm, wow, those are really, really similar, aren't they? Uh, hmm, maybe not. This is, uh, this is gonna be a little bit blushier toned, isn't it? I'm gonna just go Charlotte Tilbury because I know how finely milled it is and I know that it's going to be really, really pretty. I've just used it more recently, although I do love that Arrive bronzer. And I'm tapping 
I'm tapping because even after I've put on a layer of setting powder, I do find that the brush will catch initially until I've got more powder on my face. I don't powder so aggressively that my skin feels like, you know, dry paper or something. But this is their Bronze and Glow contour. So it's like a bronzer basically. It's, you know, got just an in-between enough shade. But I would say that Arrive Bronzer is similar enough if you don't want to own the highlight, you know? I appreciate Charlotte Tilbury's general consciousness of the market though. Like the way that she just came out with a bunch of shades in the Hollywood Flawless Filter, the way that she is making refillable packaging and stuff, and she's just not making a big deal out of it. I appreciate that about her. Like, is she doing the absolute most? Maybe not, but like, she's doing more than a lot of brands at her price point. You know, I have my misgivings about her and not her, but you know, the, the rate at which she releases products and stuff. But um, I definitely think that there is a lot of good to be said about that brand. So you'll see, I am kind of exaggerating the shadow behind my cheekbones. And that's because you know, you're gonna be like flash right in front of your face. <laughs> it's not designed to be flattering, especially at the DMV. So I wanna make sure that I have that shadow no matter how the light hits me. And if you're ever curious about where to contour and where to brighten, I suggest finding a place in your house with a mirror, like, you know, bathroom or even, you know, borrow your friend's bathroom, something like that where there is a light right over the mirror. So it's almost like shining straight down. And a lot of mirrors are like that. And then you just kind of step back from it and it will cast shadows on the contours of your face and you'll see where the light hits you and where the shadows are and you wanna just enhance that. I'm not a big fan of drawing new features on my face, <laughs> you know, like you're have a new jawline kind of thing, but just accentuating where your contours already are and you know, everybody's face <laughs> goes, you know, you, your head's round, right? Um, it's always going to kind of be a little more shadowy back here and up at your forehead and so, you know, you're kind of safe to let the brush follow that shape on your face. So you kind of start back here at the hairline and you go forward, you're gonna hit underneath, you know, whatever cheekbone situation you have. I am also going to use a little bit of my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer because it's super, super light colored. I have it in fair. And so it almost just adds to the contour effect. You know, you kind of deepen and then you have a slightly lighter shade and you're just sort of simulating the shape of your face, but in a flattering way, like the sun hath blessed you. The sun never blesses me, okay? Especially not my face, I don't allow it. Cool. Now, as far as blushes are concerned, and honestly, as you're choosing anything that you are going to be using as like your pigment, you know, pigment powders on your face, find things that blur, finely milled things, mineral things that are going to blur on the skin. And that is something that I find happens very muchly from the Wayne Goss blushes. So this one is Blush Peony, an absolutely gorgeous bright pink. And I'm not shying away, I mean, I never shy away from blush, but I'm not shying away from color as far as the richness of my skin, because that's something that, again, will kind of get lost in the flash. So if you wanna look like you're wearing blush, put on a little more blush than you normally do. And also I'm going to use more than one shade. Well, I found Santorini. <laughs> A little, a little too late khaki. My other Wayne Goss blush was hiding in my eyeshadow drawer because their packages look the same. <laughs> All of his compacts look the same. So now I'm going in with Coral Rose, the much fairer pink shade, kind of using that to blend on top. But like, look at the smoothing that that does on my skin. It's just a really, really nice texture. And I am going to use just a little bit of his highlighter because his highlighter is, at least in this shade, it's wearable enough. And it also adds like this really nice blurring quality, but I'm not gonna do a whole bunch. Like I don't mind looking like I'm wearing makeup. Okay, and for that spot over my brow that just insists on pushing back through my makeup, I have this stuff that I love from Lily Lolo. And uh, Lily Lolo is like a, you know, pretty unsung little clean beauty company. And this is their powder concealer. Touch that spot. And I'll even kind of pack it on there and like bake it. 
And you can actually use an eye primer like the Thrive uh, 360 Eye Lift, Eye Lift 360, whatever it's called. And um, you can put it on top of there and it will make any makeup that you put on that zit waterproof, which is pretty phenomenal too. But I'm just gonna let that sit there for a second and then I will kind of touch up the blon bronzer on it. I told you guys, I, I make the word bronzer up all the time. Okay, let's do some eyes. And I wanna play it really safe on the eyes, honestly, because again, you want to make sure that you look like you. And if that means, you know, blue eyeshadow, shadow from stem to stern then do you but for me it means playing it pretty tame so I'm going in starting with my little Charlotte Tilbury exaggerized palette here and you know I think that as far as making your face just look contoured and highlighted you know you don't necessarily need to pull out an eyeshadow palette you could just use your contour and your highlight you know you don't have to try and mimic it sometimes we we don't think outside the box in terms of like what belongs on what parts of our faces and um, you know if you're just trying to kind of add shadow and light the same way you did on your cheeks well use the same products you did on your cheeks. And I'm just following the natural shape of my eye socket. I'm gonna kind of pull it out a little bit right here because my whole face is on the front of my face. <laughs> Think about that, right? If you're looking straight ahead and then you turn, I lose all of my face. <laughs> like it all just stops. I don't have any real face to speak of on the side. And uh, some people's, you know, some people's eyes are so nice and wide set that their eyes kind of, you know, their eyebrows and stuff, like they, they don't have all this crazy real estate that I have, but I have a lot of real estate there. And so I will pull my shadow out and also pull my brow out a little bit so that I don't look so much like a bird. Is that the, oh no, birds are the other way. Birds have to do this to look at you. So, I don't know, what has a flat face? A flounder? <laughs> oh my God, Khaki. Please stop bagging on yourself. You don't look like a flounder. LOL, who hasn't tweezed her eyebrows in a long time? It's like the eyeshadow is literally catching <laughs> on my eyebrow hairs. That's okay. You guys won't tell anybody, will you? Everything smells like that Bite Beauty foundation right now. That is the only thing about that foundation that confounds me is that it has a fragrance, but other than that, it's it's just so, so wonderful. Doing some gentle highlighting and contouring here, and I am gonna smoke out my lower lash line. Another thing that I'm very aware of is how high up my face my eyes are. And so I actually have like, I don't know, I feel like a lot of leeway to put product underneath my eyes without it looking like, you know, they're crawling towards my cheeks. Blend as the day is long. Yes. It's just this really pretty kind of wet look, translucent glitter. And all that I've really done there is, you know, accentuate what was already there. And again, kind of pull my eyes I don't know, to the sides just a little bit. It would not be me if I didn't do a little brush eyeliner situation. Again, this is not the time to be trying new products or new techniques. You know, you wanna know what you're getting yourself into. You wanna know that the shades look good on you, that the foundation, the complexion products are a good shade match. And basically that all the stuff that you're using is reliable. Use your favorite stuff, you know? Bite did finally send me their upswing, their mascara and their liquid eyeliner. Let me know if you guys want a dedicated video review on those. I am going to take a couple of liberties on my eyebrows just because I do feel like they end up looking pretty flat if all I do is mousse them. Like it's okay when I photograph myself in natural light, but in artificial light, they're going to get a little bit lost. Let me see, I make sure that the tail is there. The older we get, those are the hairs that want to quit on us, is the tail of your eyebrow. So, it really helps. It really helps to make sure that that tail is visible. All right, a little bit of brow mousseage. This is the Glossier Boy Brow in Brown. All right, a little bit of mascara. Not only 
is that is it still glowing? But I managed to get glitter on it. <laughs> Forget camouflage, I'm bedazzling my zit. Oh good, oh good. Poked myself in the eye, perfect. We're just gonna let that chill there for a second. There, turns out blush was the answer. There we go. All right, so let's do some lips. And for me, you know, I'm always gonna go in with my namesake lip liner here. And for my actual lip color, I'm gonna go with something that I know that I can always count on, and that is the Vesca Ginger Lily. It's just, you know, the right shade of cool rose for me and for this look. I do find a glossy lip is going to look far more healthy on camera than a like a flattened out like lipstick on me. But again, if you're used to seeing yourself in a red lip, go for a red lip, girl, and go for your favorite red lip. Perform a little bit of magic here on my clockwork orange vibes. Touch under my eye with just a little bit more powder. And then, you know, examine. Like, do I like where my blush is on my face? Do I feel like I need a little bit more? Usually. <laughs> and then I am going to hit it with a little bit of this Hourglass Veil Soft Focus Setting Spray. Mm -hmm. I just worked really hard on my makeup and I want it to stay. But also, you know, it's not the case this time because I am in New Jersey in the winter. But the last time I got my license picture taken was in Texas in the summer and there was a very, very long wait and very poor air conditioning situation in the DMV and um, I, I ended up looking quite wilted. You know, you just never know. So, you know, make sure once you've worked this hard on putting all of your makeup on that um, you actually get to maintain it. <laughs> make sure it sticks around. So that is the vibe today for my photos, I should probably wear something that contrasts a little bit more against my skin. <laughs> but now I don't really wanna change because I don't wanna get makeup on my sweater. So I guess we're just gonna have to let that be what it is. But you can always test the fidelity of the makeup look with your camera flash yourself. You know, you can turn your phone around and actually, you know, hit the flash so that you see how it looks and it will call out any of your, you know, possible patches of like HD powder or anything like that. Um, and then you can kind of fix them ahead of time. At the end of the day, does it really, really matter that I look great in my DMV photos? Not necessarily, I don't really care about that, but uh, I did want to use this as an opportunity to share my tips for you guys for maybe some situations in your life that are a little more important than a DMV photo, like being a wedding guest or something like that. So yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. <laughs>